Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Glen Morangy 10, but first I have a confession. I broke my own rule. And this is a rule that I have not broken since 2015 when I started this channel. I didn't review uh, Glen Morangy Signet very well. I didn't cover the distillery. I didn't cover the whiskey. I didn't do all of my legwork. I normally do. And my one rule on this channel is that every time I cover a new brand, I have to do that. That's what I hold myself to, it's what I feel makes this a good channel. So this is me paying my penance. I have to drink whiskey as my as my penance for, for missing my own rule. So anyway, this is Glenmorangie 10. And for those of you that don't know, Glenmorangie is just a freaking powerhouse of a whiskey company. They have so many different expressions. There's something like 14 of them that are available, but there's like eight or nine of them that are fairly readily available in a well-stocked whiskey uh, liquor store. So. Um, if you're looking for one, you might not really know what to buy, and that's kind of what I'm here for. So back in 1843, William Matheson, he started a new distillery called Glenmorangie in the Highlands. And Glenmorangie ends up meaning something like Vale of Tranquility or Vale of Big Meadows. It's one of those two. There's not really, they don't really know. So um, it might not surprise you to hear that Glenmorangie started off as a brewery and then became a distillery. But in the 30s and the 40s, they ended up shutting down a couple of times, and basically, you know, it was it was because of political climate. There was a uh, you know a depression <laughs> that kind of affects sales, and then obviously war and whatnot. But by 1948, they were able to kind of start selling again. And one thing that you might not have ever noticed on a bottle of this, if you have a bottle, by all means check it out. Right on the side here, it says "Perfected by the 16 Men of Tain." And that is actually a little bit different than what it said in the past, um, and actually even further back than that. But every bottle has said something like that. Basically, the 16 men of Tain were these, these 16 men. It wasn't always the same people, but they worked for decades at the Glenmorangie distillery, and they made everything. They distilled everything. They, they did everything that made the distillery what it was. And as of 2009, they actually upped it to 24. So you might see that actually change at some point, just to say 24 people or whatever, maybe just the men of Tain. Who knows? Either way, um, Funny to think that such a large distillery would be run by so few people, but maybe it doesn't take all that much. Who knows? Automated equipment and whatnot. Anyway, as far as the, just this one whiskey goes, they call it the original. And it's not just because it's the original, but it kind of has a double meaning. So most of those other core ranges, there's three other core ranges, and I'll put them up here, is they're all stemmed or they all stem from this whiskey. This goes into different barrels to finish and then you end up with those different expressions. So very kind of cool thing in my mind that this is the stem of all of those different whiskeys. But um, another cool thing I ran across while I was researching this is that the distillery actually has their own forest in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri. And they you know, cut down their own lumber and then they end up letting it air dry for a couple of years. And those, that lumber ends up going into barrels that later get sold to Jack Daniels and Heaven Hill. And then after they've used them, they send them back up to Glenmorangie, uh, their warehouses for aging. So kind of interesting, like big circle there. But um, when you hear about Jack Daniels, you always hear about how their, their barrels are used pretty much everywhere. And it's interesting to hear that Glenn Morangie is giving Jack Daniels barrels. <laughs> so anyway, I have talked enough about this. I feel like I've paid my penance and now my reward is some whiskey. So let's go ahead and give this a nose. <sighs> it's a good night. <laughs> so um, the Glenn Morangie original the nose is very lemony, at least to me. It's very lemony, it's a little citrusy, just you know, get a little bit more like an orange in there as well, but mostly lemon for me. There's also a bit of peach and some vanilla as well. Um, I'm sure the vanilla is coming off of those ex-bourbon casks. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. I'm actually just getting something that I hadn't written down in my notes earlier. Could be because this is the second time I've filmed this and sometimes things open up a little bit more. Um, so the number one thing that I'm tasting, once again, is like kind of a lemony, but I'm gonna go into that in just a sec. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna get rid of my, I think it's, I don't know which side it's on, but I'm gonna get rid of the icon. Um, 
it's over there. So anyway, the first thing I'm getting is vanilla, but then just a general fruitiness. I was originally saying lemon, I know, but I'm gonna go a little bit more general. So you've got lemon, you've got orange, you've got a little tiny bit of berry maybe. Um, you've got like apricot and peach. This is like everything, but it's melded well together. So I'm gonna just say fruitiness and put a picture of a whole bunch of fruit. Um, but I will say that of all of that, even though it's melded well, the ones I'm picking out are the lemon, um, the orange and the peach. So um, very, very fruity whiskey. All right, so as far as an overall on this whiskey, my general opinion of this is that this is worth having in your bar, potentially always, because it's $35, it is extremely um, friendly to new scotch drinkers. This is something I would recommend giving to anybody starting out in scotch, and I think that unless they really, really don't have a taste for whiskey, I think this is something that they could be like, oh, whiskey can taste like this? You know, it's not gonna be like, if you had them try a Laphroaig, or if you had them try like a rye or something, it's not gonna be just like, oh my God, my mouth. It's gonna be like, wow, this tastes like fruit, or this tastes really light and very, very nice. Um, so anyway, I think that new whiskey people will be excited about this. I think it's something that they'll enjoy. I think experienced whiskey people can be excited about the fact that this is a stem of a lot of other drams that are very good. And I think that would make an extremely cool episode, although I probably won't do it um, unless I just happen to have all the bottles of doing kind of like taste this and then have the other um, three core range uh, bottles in here and see if you can kind of detect the the difference that aging it in a sherry cask or, you know, um, I think this French oak is one of the other ones. Um, either way, I think that would be a cool episode. So any of you other whiskey tubers out there, feel free to steal that idea. I'm totally fine with it. I might do it myself. Anyway, so thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Um, if you want to finish the video now, go for it. But otherwise, stay tuned for another quick little message about episode number 100. you're still here. Good for you. <laughs> so uh, it, just in case you don't normally hang around for this little thing, you click off too fast or whatever. A lot of times there's like bloopers or just like little little extra messages here or whatever. Either way, always have the patrons here. So if you become a patron, your name will be here as well. Um, but I would like to just say hi, uh, you know, thank you to my newest patrons. Um, uh, something Jackrabbit. Sorry, hold on. Uh... Jubilant Jackrabbit, and then Kevin James and Captain Irony. So thank you guys very much for your patronage. I appreciate it. About episode number 100. So what I'm going to do here, and this I used to do this when I first started the channel. I always told you guys what I was going to do the following episode because I always thought it was more fun to know that you were all drinking with me. Because this is episode 100, I'm getting back to my roots. I'm going to start probably doing this more frequently. And I will tell you that my next bottle, the bottle that I chose for episode 100, and I'm going to explain why in the video, is... Nika from the Barrel. It was a $65 Japanese whiskey, so that already tells you that it's it's really well priced for Japanese whiskey. I think you should get your hands on a bottle of this and drink along with me on Saturday. So thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I look forward to episode 100. Cheers. <laughs>